for you now. It's called Mountain of Her Memory. It's on my brand new album. Hope y'all like it. Probably five out of a hundred people will make it through the Nashville system. Two will survive. 2% odds. So you got to be tough to get through that. And I think the people miss that with the women. It's about a strength, which doesn't mean you're a bitch. It just means that you're strong. You have a viewpoint. To be as soft, as sexy, as feminine, you have to balance that. And people sometimes take that as a sign of weakness. Or they take it as a sign of being a bitch. And it's, it's neither. It's just the way these folks are built. autographs and stuff and I will um, take a group shot with the whole record label all the people on the record label mm -hmm. um, that are performing probably tonight and uh, I think I'm very ambitious in most situations I would always <laughs> I would always choose to go a little farther I mean I, I think ambition is is about how how hard you're willing to push yourself to get something and I don't think there's any level that I could ever say that I wouldn't push myself to. Are you giving me flowers? Yes, are, they, <laughs> are they from you? They're from a fan club member named Daryl. Uh, I knew you wouldn't be this sweet. Loser! I mean, I don't know if you know her story. She came from Florida, and she was winning all sorts of contests and karaoke contests at local uh, local clubs in her neighborhood. And uh, she decided to bring those tapes, come to Nashville, and she told her mom that, okay, I'm going to give myself a year. And I guess the very last week before that year was up, she signed a deal. deal. two women's records back to back. Women can't headline on a tour. There were all of these presumed facts that were that all of the women who came along in the 80s had to disprove. You know, that's why Dolly went to Hollywood. That's why, you know, all these women had to overcome these unspoken rules in country music. To this very day, they still talk at record labels about having a female slot. I've been meeting the record labels trying to get a record deal. Joe was a callback. I had already taken a tape over and a picture and they called back and wanted to meet me. So I set up an appointment with Joe and I went to Joe's office to sing for him live. It's a pretty nerve-wracking thing to be in here for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes and singing acoustically. Can't make the mistake. Um, and then she left and I spent, I don't know, another 10 or 15 minutes thinking about it. I walked over and said, let's make an offer on her. I got a phone call several hours later, and I thought, it's from Minnie McCready. She's calling to tell me how excited she is. 
So I called her back and said, Hi, Minnie, this is Joe Galante. How are you? Well, I'm fine, and I'm very flatter flattered that you've made an offer to me. I, I don't know if this is the right thing for me to do. We, we don't know each other. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Now, we're making an offer as one of the biggest companies in country music to somebody who doesn't have an offer. In fact, several people have already passed on her. But she's giving me this feeling like, well, maybe you're not good enough for me. And I was, it was hysterical to me. I, I thought, this is unbelievable. Joe, I just have to tell you something. Yes. No man has ever written such a nice thing to me in my entire oh, life. Good to see you. That was oh. so sweet of you. Well, hey, cool. Mandy. I meant it. I love Who is that, Bush? Yeah, how hey, you know? how are you? Saw your photo shoot. What it's amazing. Think? It's great. You're a happening. Well, I'm awesome. We got You're a great so cover. <laughs> had a great cover. Lots Black of great dress, shots. the white dress. Amazing. <laughs> so you all set? Yeah, I will be, I guess. <laughs> Bye, y'all. See you a little bit. Doing important dressing. Yeah, he's the head kahuna. That's the man right there. He, the you can't guy. get any bigger than that. <laughs> you ready, Gail? Yes. Yeah. It's awesome, I'll tell you. <laughs> we like women of country music. Yeah, 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 we do. Women of country has certainly added a lot of sex appeal to the uh, to the industry. I love that wet look, baby. Thank you. That makes me wet. Oh God. Well, I think what really works for the women of country music is the relatability factor. Their lives are quite public. Yet they, you know, they do the glamour thing too. All the uh, women who like country music can look at these gals and say, "Man, I wish I could dress like that. Wish I could sing like that." <laughs> essentially was not a very country sound to start with and the image was definitely different with the pierced belly button and the whole thing a lot of people you know looked askance at that until she started having hit records and they realized her, and she has a very young following and i think the industry still has difficulty understanding the youth market this traditionally has not been music for young people <laughs> She was wearing a cotton dress. She'd just gotten here from Florida. And she seemed very demure, very sweet. And the girl that I see now is not that same girl. So somewhere along the way, either her confidence, she allowed herself to become, well, you know, more sensual, more open in her look, or someone helped her along the way to say that's okay to do that, or let's play this up. The presentation is always the pictures, they lay the pictures down in front of me and go, this girl's 22, 21, not married, thin, check it out. And then I get the tape. Uh, with a guy, you know, they give you a tape and you play the tape. You, you go, you got a picture of him? Uh, well, he's a little overweight. Uh, we're going to get some pictures made real soon. He's on a, on a program. But you like the voice. You know, but with the, with the girls, they, they think that what I want to see is a babe. that some of the record companies had a mentality of spray them with a water bottle and take a picture and that was how you did marketing on female artists. It used to be their male counterpart or group that was going to be breaking if they were a new artist that was their competitor. And now it is the female artist because there have been so many that have broken that they have to look across town and say, what's different about me? Well, hopefully it's your music and not anything else that has to set you apart. We're going to Planet Hollywood for my very first fan club party. And I am so... Uh, first things first, start. 
Are you hungry? Yeah. Um, we'll eat the fans' food. Humility is held as a very, very big virtue in country music. I like your shirt. I'm up here singing, but I'm no different than you are sitting out there in the audience. We are the same person. We interact that way. I used to be a waitress. I used to be a truck driver. Now I sing. But that doesn't mean I'm better than you are. It just means I am one of you and you are one of me. And that's the vibe that you're supposed to carry forward. If you do not, even if you don't believe that, you are expected to act that way. And that's the secret weapon, is that one-on-one, -on -one, me to you, just folks, directness. You got six. What's your name? Vince. Hi, Vince. A fan in country music expects a lot. And, you know, sometimes I get really mad because they can drive you crazy. You're welcome. The only thing that anybody owes you is a show when you buy a ticket. You know, or a good album when you buy an album, but you, you know, that your your ticket price and your album price does not allow you to have access and to have meet and greets and to hang out. But in country music, they really expect to have a lot of attention, and consequently, they get a lot of attention. I just want to tell you guys that I really totally appreciate everything that you guys have done to get here and to just be the loyal country music fans that you are. I love you guys and I appreciate you so much. Now if you guys are really good, we're going to try to talk her into singing a couple songs later on. Speak up, would ya? You're on the wrong car. <laughs> Thank you, Mindy. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, 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 pain. Okay, you're set. <laughs> Go to RCA Building A. Oh. My face is killing me. I cannot smile anymore. my second fanfare and I come to meet the stars because country music is a great music and the stars the country music stars they love their fans and that's what I am as a fan I go around and get autographs and hug the pretty women and just do all kinds of things shake my leg down one two three come on and get it the women are the ones that I like the best these ugly old men, you could leave them at home. Just bring me the women. <laughs> the flesh and meeting the people who buy the record somehow is distasteful to them. I love it. It's where the rubber meets the road. I mean, these are the consumers. These, are, you know, I never look down my nose at them. They're my aunts and uncles, you know. They're my people. I've, I don't come from a fancy background. I mean, I'm, I, I have 23 first cousins, and those that's who's at fanfare. America is a land of people like that, and we all come. I've always wanted this. I will always want this. I might want more someday, but this is for sure positive, no doubt in my mind. I've wanted to be a singer since birth. Oh, we're not just gonna get very far in this cart. Uh, who else? Good. 
too many of them. Huh? The way they're built, they're trying to find Lordy. Give me a cap. Give me a cap. See that cap? Tracy Lawrence. There's Tracy. Oh, that's good looking cap. Is that the only color he's got? Right now, yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. We'll take it. We'll still hunt rubies. We can always come back. Yeah. Four bounce. Four bounce. Last on the last. Last booth. Oh, no. It's filled with all kinds. Ah, uh, hello, Reba. Can we fly a reband? Yeah. <laughs> when you come to my website at www.reba.com, there are many different areas to check in. You can get information about my current album, what it's choose, what's the great inside scoop. We have a terrific contest to be announced at the end of July for all our friends. If you sign up for Reba Net over here in my booth, you'll be one of the very first people to know all the details by email. Or is it really? She wanted to be a big star, but I think she got bigger than she ever dreamed. And all of a sudden, when you get that big, you get to the point where you don't have to go Reba McIntyre. You just go Reba, and everybody knows who it is. I mean, that's pretty amazing, like Elvis. Oftentimes when people come from the country, people assume they don't have a business sense. She was a barrel rider, and what she had was great common sense. When I got with Reba, though, I was shocked because, and I shouldn't have been shocked, but I, you always are, what ever done in her records was walk in with the lyric, sing the vocal, and leave. She wasn't in pre-production meetings, she wasn't in on who's going to play on it, what's going to be played on it. All she did was sing. She had the words. And unless an artist forced themselves in the other parts of the process, they had no say, and if they did, they were known as trouble artists. We've pulled up to shows before, and the audience is sitting in the park, and we have to unload off the bus and all the equipment and set up right in front of the audience. I mean, that's happened. <laughs> so you're like, if they only knew what was going on out here. And then every time I would go back and say, you know, this needs to be fixed. Well, well you know, you can't. You can't do that, Reba. And in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, yes, I can, and oh, yes, I will. I know in, in working with women that, that nothing was expected of them. You know, the record companies, you know, you'd have a marketing meeting on a guy act, and, you know, there'd be a thousand different ways to look at it and a thousand different, you know, plans that were going to be implemented. And then when it would come to a female act, it was, well, you know, she's not going to sell a lot of records. She'll never be a headliner. And I think that Reba reacted to that, you know. She just said, hey, I'm going to take it into my own hands and I'm going to show you that a woman can have platinum albums and a woman can headline a show and a woman can run a business. I admire Reba very much. You? you want a picture? I actually think I'm a lot like her. And I think that Reba is kind of a person that is <clears throat> a no crap. And I because this business can be so political and so, ugh sometimes where you just the butt kissing is just sickening and she just doesn't she's not involved in that she takes care of her fans and she takes care of Reba This has been a really hard time for me. I have a second record coming out, which people call the sophomore jinx. They automatically expect the artist, myself, to be the most panicked about the second record, but it's not true. The record label is the most panicked. Minnie's taken a great deal of time and emotion, uh, probably more so than any of the other developing acts that, that I have been working on the last couple of years. Uh, I would say the most amount of time I have spent on anybody has been Mindy. There's no doubt about that. A lot of times when you're a record label head, you feel like the whole weight of the world is on your shoulders and I have to make the right decision and I'm here for a reason, so I'm going to make the call. Thank you so much. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things that I think Joe is brilliant at, but there's also a lot of things that I think I could help him with because of what my age is. I mean, his age is not buying, his age group isn't buying country music, mine is. Oh, bye guys, see you later. Oh. Minnie's a very bright woman. She is not stubborn. Okay. What she is, is um, part actress, part scared, 
part um, full of herself. I know best. At 21, we all knew best. Bye. She knows that I'm there for her, that I care about her, but I'm also an authority figure, so maybe I don't always want to be close to that person. And if he's getting mad at me, he's getting mad at me for a reason, but I've got to put on this air like I don't care. Uh, or that I should tell him where he should go. And Big Brother has good news and bad news because as a Big Brother, sometimes you really love your sister and other times you just want to smack the crap out of her. woman song, a modern day Romeo and Juliet. And Juliet decides that she's not going to die for Romeo. Which I thought, you know, was a really, really cool thing because in this day and age, I would not die for any man. thought it was a song that was a little too hip. He thought that people might not understand it. Country music is not western, so to speak, anymore. It's about real life. It's about real problems and real things. and. No, not all of life is about drinking and leaving your wife and having a dog and a truck. It's just not. <laughs> There's an awful lot of it out there that is not country to me. It goes under the name of country, but it's not country. It isn't. Traditional country is what has made my living and fed my kids and fed me and clothed us and, and kept us alive for all these years and that's what I love is the plain pure country and uh, I couldn't leave it if I wanted to if somebody asked me to do uh, a pop album I'd have to say well now hey I can do you an album you can put some pop music behind it but my singing is still going to be country you know because I can't sing any different I don't know any different Willie Nelson, Waylon, Reba McIntyre, Vince Gill, Brooks and Dunn Jerry Lee Lewis, Loretta Lynn, George Strait, he's been here, Clay Walker, Tracy Lawrence, George Jones, Merle Haggard, every major star except Garth Brooks. I think they like to come here because they always, you know, we always have pretty big crowds and everything and they enjoy that part of it. And I think too that they like to come for my mother's good catering, good down home country food. <laughs> All the crews that come in here and the stars and everybody says that it's just like being at their mother's or grandmother's, you know, for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I think they like to eat here too. The classic country stars lived who they were to their fans through their music. There was a very powerful connection made. They had charismatic personalities. They came from hard luck backgrounds, almost all of them. Their stories are as every bit as compelling as their music is. You don't find that in young people today. They grew up in a different world. They grew up in shopping malls, you know. They didn't grow up chopping cotton. They grew up, you know, mowing the grass. I experienced <laughs> divorce, uh, being hurt by being lonely, uh, having children to raise on my own. All the things that any and every woman goes through. Uh, I'm no different from you. I'm no different from the lady that works in the bank. I'm no different from the lady that works at a, 
in a drugstore or pharmacy or whatever. I just have <sighs> blew my eye thoughts. <laughs> the doorbell. Stand by your man. At the moment, we're trying to finish an album. At the moment, Mindy is in L.A. with Dean, Kane. Um, there is there is a Christmas season coming up that Mindy has to understand, and that's what I'm going to Indianapolis to talk to her about, that it, there are various deadlines. If you miss these deadlines, you miss Christmas. If you miss Christmas, you miss 60% of the year in terms of sales. Also means that when she, her album doesn't come out, she no longer qualifies for the Grammy. She won't qualify for the American Music Awards because she won't have any new product. And in our business, out of sight, out of mind. So Mindy has to make a choice what she wants to do. And that if she chooses not to do that, she's made a major mistake because the window is now. It's not a year from now. It's not six months from now. It is now. She was going to be here, and she was going to meet us, and uh, she was running late anyway. Mindy runs late. That's part of Mindy, you know. Mindy gets dressed. Mindy wakes up. Mindy runs late. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I'll just have to think. All right. All right. Where are you at? Our call is five, right? Load in five. fortune of not having to talk my artist into doing something if that's what I think the my artist who happens to be my wife uh, should do her attitude is get me to where I'm going and show me the stage and I'll go to the bus I have total trust in him total completely he's he cares more than anybody else could possibly ever care you know because first of all he's uh, my husband secondly he's my manager so uh, I have total, complete trust in him. One of the things that I really disliked when I got to Nashville was the fact that very few of them were rich. In most cases, it was their own fault. Yeah, but it was also bad advice, yeah, yeah. Uh, or no advice, or deals yeah. that were very lopsided, but not in the artist's favor. All is said and done, people assume a Tammy Wynette, or a lot of these people have millions and millions of dollars, but it's not the case. And then we'll go back 27. So it's a crazy horse, too. Yeah, unfortunately, that is. Tammy and George have had financial difficulties, and she has to work. She needs the money. I know that sounds odd, but to live as they do, she has to work. She loves the applause. She loves to hear that. Uh, she loves to sing. And she always will tour. She could never... It's just part of her existence. And then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. I do trust Joe. I trust him very much. I trust him because he will let me have a say. There's just certain people in my organization right now that I don't trust and want out <laughs> because I feel like um, they're not really working for the benefit of my career and myself, which is what I'm paying them to do. They're working for some other agenda, whatever it may be. So what do you do? Fire them. That's all you can do. I mean, you can't continue to have people around you that you don't trust because it's constant headache. And the last thing I need is more to think about, you know? It's one of those things where... <laughs> Speaking of the devil... <laughs> Thank you. 
that little toughness in her is what makes her interesting. And she has that, you know, trailer park thing. You know, she knows what it's like. And Tammy does too. That's what they share, is the fact that they have crawled their way up through broken glass to get where they are. to be more than just an artist who want to have more control over my booking and my publishing and my fan club and um, publicity mainly because I thought we could do it better and, and we did. Reba slowly slowly parlayed her success as a, as a singer into a successful businesswoman. And she started a publishing company that has become outside of all the big companies like EMI and Sony and Warner Brothers and MCA. Starstruck is probably the most successful independent company in town. It's very political. The thing I've had to learn at a very early age in the business is to accept the fact I'm a woman. It's different. Uh, you don't scream, you don't holler, you don't throw tantrums, you don't bitch about stuff. You find a way. A woman is smarter. A woman can find a way to get her way, but you have to be very political about it. So watch what you say, watch what you do. You've got little eyes watching you all the time. I'm not getting up. I can't. I'm cold and I'm tired. And I'm a bitch! I'm exhausted. I've had enough of today already. What kind I don't of for sound check at all. Yeah, I'm not sound checking. Sound check is like... So many of the young acts today, they're put on a big tour opening for somebody. They're playing in front of 10, 15,000 people a night. They've never in their life played in front of a hundred people a night. I feel like every and I think that that's something that an artist really misses in their career if they don't have that opportunity to play all our venues and really learn how to be entertainers. Mm -hmm. I've played cattle barn sales. I've played carpet factory parties. Mm. I've played everything imaginable oh. to make a living. I didn't have help from record labels. So I didn't have people say, here, Reba, here's, here's $10,000 to, to get you started. I never have that. If I played a job Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, I was thanking God for, for the jobs. It's just stressful to be in a different place every single night. You have to bring your bags up, unpack, repack, put it back on the bus, take it back off the bus, you know. This is a long run that we're out right now. We're out for eight days in a row. Uh-huh. She tried everything possible not to really? do it. I'm not feeling well, I can't be here, I have to be with my brother, I gotta be with my mother, I have to see the doctor. Whatever it was, there was always something coming up where she couldn't do it. And then finally you'd back her into a corner and she'd have to go do it. There's, there's one rule, work hard. Continue to work hard. And keep working hard. If you slough off, if you, if you think, well, I can, I can back off just a little bit. There's just eight million people out there that's wanting to take your place. They're just waiting for you to just kind of slack off just a little bit so they can run past you. And they'll do it. somebody that I don't think has 100% trust in anybody, except Mindy. But there are degrees of that. Some she will trust more, some she will trust less. I don't want to do that. When she was probably 13, her dad left. I think there were circumstances involved in that, um, where relationships weren't trustworthy. So she sees things that are supposed to be perfect, and they don't work. I think I'm a smart person. But I'm not so much smart as I am wise to what is going on, what has been going on, and how things work, and, and what happens when you do this. And 
I think that I have a, a worldly wisdom at 21 years old that most people don't have when they're 40. And it just is because of growing up in a situation where you had to think for yourself. There's nobody there to tell you the answers. I just naturally, for some reason, I always think that a person is being dishonest. And it's sad to say 80% of the time they usually are. Made for an interesting growing up. Mindy, when you look like that, nobody's going to be looking at your ears. Trust me on that one. Thank you very much. Hey, Doug. Yeah. We'll be in a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> Help me. Kick butt, baby. Oh, It's okay. I'm depressed. You're like, well, there's nothing we can do about my knockers. They're big right now. You're here for two reasons tonight. You're here for Minnie McCready. Did you hear? Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Randy Travis. Wow, baby! Are y'all ready? <laughs> I know it. Okay, she's going. Well, let's start on. off. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome platinum BNA recording artist Bye. Mindy McCready. Oh, no. Oh, no. no, you gotta get it back on there quick. Where's my mic? I've done pretty good, 21 years old, making decisions for myself and trying to figure out what I feel like is best for me and what I feel like Mindy needs to do. And I know that I will get everything done that I have to do when it's time to get it done. I mean, I, I've never, you know, been late for things and, and missed deadlines and stuff like that. I mean, I'm very responsible about my career. Morgan, last night, Lori and I started drinking tequila, and I found out, actually, Mindy, Lori, and I started drinking tequila, and I found out that my experiences uh, being in the record business worked for me because they drank twice as much as I did, and I'm standing, and they are late. <laughs> Mindy is not here. Quite frankly, it upsets me because what the opportunity here is enormous. She has some things to learn. But when she's there, it makes up for it. You absolutely fall in love. 
So, I mean, you're, you're, you're going back and forth with this all the time. And I know this is not the clearest answer in the world, but I feel like I'm President Clinton right now being asked about my wife, and I'm not sure I can answer this properly. She canceled <laughs> us, too, you know, because she's too big. I mean, when, when of course, they just had one song, we're, we get a lot of no names here. And then a year later, all of a sudden, they've got a song, and, and, and then they sort of disappear from the scene. It's hard to get them because they're in demand, I, you know? I think what happens, that it, whether it's a, a male or a female in this business, country music is very much fan-driven. It is very much an earthy medium of music. Uh, your personalities are involved. It's not the star thing where you can get aloof. And some of the ones that get their success too fast get aloof. And when that happens, yeah. they almost... <laughs> is that when you look at what has to be done, she has a lot of work to do. She's made the rounds once in this music business. You have to do it continually to keep people remembering who you are. She's out of sight, out of mind. Therefore, she doesn't wind up in any of the awards that just came out, the award nominations. Don't send me down a path saying I want to do this and then I turn around and you're not there. Attitude changed a little bit in our interviews. Well, she's one of the uh, women that's had it all come real fast, so the certain lack of humility, I think. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of these artists, you know, in, to, to get to where they're at, but uh, Mindy's pretty young, has got it real quick, and now all of a sudden, uh, you know, just being in the Hollywood scene, she's hooked up with Dean Kane, and so her, her notoriety is, be is bigger now. Anybody that's young and successful and does well, people can't stand it. <laughs> and it, you just kind of go on and, and have a good time. <laughs> that's what I've done. I don't listen to what they say anymore. I don't listen to the, to the stuff that, that goes around and, and the little tight-knit community of rumors that there is. We try to work it out a hundred times. to live my life the way that I feel is right and I don't have to answer to Nashville for that I'll have to answer to somebody for that someday if I, I don't think I'm ever going to have to answer to Nashville for that you're the star you're 21 you know, everybody's there you're with Superman I mean God Almighty what else do you want to do Congratulations, Mindy.